we're doing here is just kind of a quick recap of uh, the purpose of the trip, where we went, and kind of what happened. Um, so our main goal was to uh, torture, in a sense, to really test the limits of the Opus OP4. So we had been trying to get to the Ozark National Forest for like a couple of months uh, and, and couldn't. It took us a long time to finally get out there and get filming, um, but where we went was the Ozark National Forest. We left on a Sunday, we were planning just a quick three-day trip. We were kind of watching things closely. As in the Ozarks, you need to watch water levels. Uh, you want to, water levels can rise and drop. You can add flash flooding really, uh, really quickly, obviously, flash flooding. Um, so you have to watch water levels, see where uh, rainfall amounts are at, um, and just kind of watch things closely. Getting down there, uh, arrived Sunday, water levels were high, but the campsite that we were going to, I knew was uh, up at a much higher elevation and not an area that was prone or uh, really had any potential at all for flooding. So we were, we were good there, um, even at the high water levels where they were. And man, it was a beautiful campsite. Uh, good trip in, um, some good, uh, good off-road trails, some good four-wheel drive tracks that kind of put Jordan through some terrain to kind of give him some seat time wheeling with a trailer uh, and to kind of start testing out the Opus a little bit more. Um, so that was really, really enjoyable. Had a few really, really shallow water crossings coming in, some good off camber, a um, couple of spots uh, with some good washouts to kind of really flex the trailer and the vehicle um, on kind of opposing sides to kind of feel the articulation of the hitch and just kind of see what it's like wheeling with the Opus. Um, and, uh, you know, out the gate was pretty shocked um, how well it tows behind. Uh, we use a fifth, gen, fifth generation 4Runner, 2016 4Runner um, with just kind of a basic ARB lift kit. It did have helper airbags in the rear we could kind of adjust the height uh, in the rear end a little bit depending on what our tongue weight was. So that was nice. Um, but yeah, getting into the Ozarks, um, it was nice. We, we caught a couple of areas where we're doing some, you know, kind of off camber on one side, but the trailer was still staying somewhat uh, level and uh, some kind of down, downward grade terrain. So it was really good kind of flexing through. Uh, trailer made it through to our campsite with no hangups, no, no catching ground, no dragging. Uh, nothing and towed awesome um, getting down there and then the following day uh, we wanted to go out and explore we were watching the water levels drop rapidly no rain had come through uh, anywhere north of where we were no 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 rain anywhere in the Ozark so we were watching and we're like okay let's get out and I kind of knew I said hey we can go here there's some really uh, really shallow crossings just to kind of get our feet wet a little bit uh, and uh, yeah took the trailer through uh, actually quite a few water, cro water crossings, uh, a couple difficult tracks. Uh, one that we were going up I knew um, would be a tight squeeze and depending on what the trail was like might be too tight, too little, too little bit washed out um, for where we were but it was a, it's a track that I really really enjoy doing when I'm in the Ozarks uh, and we took it up and it did excellent, it did great. Um, there was a couple sections where you really have to weave through some trees um, where it's like I mean you're talking this much space off of both sides of the trailer and you've got to fit the vehicle and the trailer through so you're you know weeding through and you kind of back up just a tiny bit and then pull the trailer through and i was shocked actually how well um, i was able to get this thing through some really really tight uh, some overgrown areas um, you know little trail striping as you're gonna get when you go through the ozarks but that's pretty much it then we got ourselves into uh, some deeper water crossings uh, and one track that was really really hairy uh, that uh, I had gone, I think it was January of this year. Uh, I, believe, I believe it was January. And I was like, oh man, I'm gonna try and take the Opus through that. And I remember Jordan looking at me going, looking up and kind of like this, going, uh, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, good spotter. Colin's in front of us, we'll be fine. And pulled it right through, maybe that close from kind of a nice big washout to where we would have just hammered the side of the trailer, uh, but it did great. Um, made it all the way all the way through that. Um, so was really, really impressed with how the trailer uh, pulled behind us as we were wheeling. That was kind of my first thing is, you know, in Australia and other places, you know, especially where this thing has been tested the most, a lot of open space. I mean, they do the gunshot um, and they, they do a couple, a couple ones, but it's really, for the most part, a lot of open terrain not a lot of really, really tight trails. Uh, and that is the Ozarks. The Ozarks, uh, you can be running along, all of a sudden it is brush just running alongside of your vehicle. And you're like, okay, 
it continues through. You're pulling up your motor vehicle use map and you're pulling up your forest service road you know, map and everything and you go, okay, this goes up this way. And you look and you're like, uh, you're, you're talking tree this far away from your driver's side mirror and tree this far away from your passenger rear quarter. And I'm like, and I gotta get a trailer through that. So it was uh, a good, uh, good trial run of, you know, ripping this thing through that type of terrain. But that was the purpose of the trip, was to see what it's like wheeling in the areas that we all go to, that a lot of our customers go to, um, and folks that who, of us who live here in the Midwest, you know, the Ozarks, uh, and just Arkansas and Southern Missouri in general is a, is a hot spot for great camping and great wheeling. And so that was great because we were able to see what the trailer could really, really do. Um, and it did well, uh, it did really, really, really well. So that kind of was our day two, um, was just, I, I, in my opinion, being really surprised by how well the trailer did. Now, we did run into a few little, uh, little issues that we relayed to Opus um, as far as things, but they were really because it was, <laughs> uh, you know, we could have taken the bypass or we could go this way. And, you know, if it was without a trailer, go through it. But I'm like, nope, I'm, I'm not taking any bypasses. You know, as long as we can do it safely, uh, we're not damaging anything, we're, we're, you know, abiding by the laws, I'm gonna go that way, and we did. Uh, and so, yeah, a couple of them, there was one that was just really off camber, really big rocks in the area, and we just, we just ripped the trailer right through it. And really the only thing that it caught was the, the trailer jack, the wheel was hanging down, and a rock caught it and it slid it back actually on the frame rail a little bit um, so that it caught where that gas line was. Um, and then, you know, I think you probably saw in Jordan's uh, recap that, you know, the propane system wasn't working too well. That was why we actually pinched the line a little bit. Um, and then it caught the underside of the storage bin on this side and actually pushed that panel up. So we got a little bit of water intrusion when we were doing deep water crossings. However, the water was, you know, we had, it was up to three quarters up the storage box. Um, and so we got a little bit of water in there, but we just opened it up and didn't damage anything, opened up and uh, the inside, the actual trailer itself was obviously bone dry. It was just that storage box where we kind of penetrated that seal a little bit. So, um, but we did some really deep water crossings with it and I was very impressed. I mean, that was, you know, we set it up for camp that night, interior of the trailer was bone dry. Um, and like I said, it was just because we, we damaged it because we were really pushing it to the limits and kind of torturing it, that it got water intrusion in that storage box in the front. Um, and really the only other, uh, the only other thing uh, was because of the hitch setup that we had, rather than having a straight hitch connector that goes to the trailer, we had a drop. So it, it hung up on that a couple times. So we ripped out the uh, electrical cable because uh, it was, it, we had it zip tied, but it was hanging low with that, hit, you know, running kind of in line with the hitch assembly. We caught that, so then it kind of uh, messed with the electronic brakes a little bit uh, because some of the wires were pulled out, so they were shorting out. So I rewired that, everything worked great. My wife and I have always said, if we are going to tow a trailer, it better be worth it. Because um, in our opinion, just towing a trailer to slap a rooftop tent on it, uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I would rather at that point either throw the tent on my rig or not use one at all and just ground tent. Uh, which is most of the time what we do. And this is coming from, you know, years of rooftop tent use and different teardrops and even teardrops that we built um, and other trailers that we've done. And uh, like I said, if, if we kind of come to the point, like if it doesn't have a ton of water storage and, it, and it's, you know, really, you know, has a great kitchen and quality space, we don't want to take it. I was pleasantly surprised with how well the Opus did. Uh, wheeling. I put it through some stuff that uh, guys that were with us were like, uh, you shouldn't take the trailer through that. And I was like, yeah, it's fine. We dragged the underside a couple times, but uh, the suspension that's on this thing and the ground clearance that it has and the articulation with the hitch, we just pulled it through and it did fine. Um, so, and uh, we were really pleased. We finished up at the Buffalo Outdoor Center and kind of just did a uh, status check on the trailer. Like, what do we break? what's dented, what's scratched, what's scuffed, you know, does everything work? And uh, then got it home and opened it up and again and cleaned it all out and it's doing great.